In the book Dating Up the Hypergamy Factor, data from an OKCupid study conducted in 2008 was used to compare against statistics of income to assess patterns in male desirability. The Hypergamy Factor book tested hypotheses of race, income, and desirability and arrived at conclusions that may be counterintuitive to what is generally thought. If you want to see the full analysis by the book, links are in the description. The graph you see here was gleaned from the aforementioned OKCupid study that analyzed the messaging tendencies between men and women of different races. Black men, black American men in particular, have been accused of self-hate in some circles. One of these elements of self-hate as explained by interlocutors has been the propensity for black men to date interracially. If the trends observed from this data study persist until present day, like the other trends revolving around income, then the same reasoning should hold true. On the y-axis on the left-hand side are women of various races that sent out 100 messages to men of other races. On the x-axis on top are men of various races replying to the 100 messages sent out. A reply to a message signifies desirability, interest, and potential dating and mating situations. Pay attention to the black female Hispanic male interaction circled in purple. The number 36 means that when a black woman sends Hispanic men, or that black women rather, send Hispanic men 100 messages, Hispanic men reply with 36 messages, or 36% of the time. The numbers on the bottom axis represent the weighted average of overall replies by men of a given race. For example, when Hispanic men received 100 messages from all women, they replied 46.4% of the time, as noted by the 46.4 circle in purple. The numbers on the right y-axis represent the weighted average number of replies received when 100 messages were sent out. When black women as a group sent out 100 messages to all men, they received replies 34.3% of the time, as indicated by the 34.3 circled in purple. The 42 circled in purple at the bottom right origin of the weighted average replies received and given represent the average of overall replies to all women given by all men. Thus, if we were to summarize the past four slides, the summary is as follows. When men of any race receive messages from women of any race, they reply 42% of the time. Hispanic men reply more on average, replying 46.4% of the time to women of any race. Although women of any race receive 42 messages for 100 messages sent out, black women as a group receive 34.3 replies. However, black women receive more replies from Hispanic men than men on average, getting 36 replies for the 100 replies they, for the 100 messages they sent out to Hispanic men. And while Hispanic men respond to black women more often than men as a whole, they respond to black women less they, than they respond to women as a whole. If you follow the diagonal, this shows how often men reply to women of their own race out of 100 messages sent out. This can somewhat be an indicator of how much men desire women from their own ethnic group. I have summarized the replies here. Here we see the overall average is 42 replies from all men to all women. Any number higher than 42 shows how much higher than average in the high-low column, and vice versa, for replies lower than 42. Every ethnic group, except for black and white men, prefer their own ethnic group higher than average. Since marriage usually follows from dating, we can look at marriage data to see the results of the dating and mating exercises that people engaged in. As rehashed from my past video, intermarriage statistics show that blacks and whites were about three times as likely to be interracially married in 2015 than in 1980, while Hispanics and Asians stayed generally about the same. So the question is why and to whom? Well, there's been many topics brought up by men as regarding to why they're trying something different. Um, a 
lot of these topics stem from various cultural aspects within their own group. One hypothesis is that uh, men are generally, uh, if you hear uh, many discourses, that men are generally um, looking away from what is considered a traditional, or excuse me, what what is considered a postmodern American woman. Um, whether or not the the cultural aspects of dating and relationships between people of different races can transcend uh, general uh, consumer patterns or the pattern of consumer behavior and attitudes in American public remains to be seen. Um, there's also a saying that familiarity breeds contempt. That is, when someone knows your shit and you know their shit, you're less likely to be tolerant of that shit because you've you've rolled in the mire and in the muck. But when you meet someone whose shit is different than yours, it's like their shit is refreshing. Right? It doesn't smell the same. <laughs> That's just a rough way of you know saying that the uh, familiarity breeds contempt. Um, both men and women are similar in many ways. Um, excuse me, men of different races and women of different races have similar underlying tendencies when it comes down to the very basic human nature. Uh, but when we add a veneer of, of cultural and social interaction and behaviors and customs, we, we find that some cultures and customs are more compatible with uh, long-term relationship prospects than others. And so this may be a driving force uh, because I'm I've kind of, you know, I've seen the data already and I'm just rehashing it for you guys. But if we just turn and say, yeah, you know, men are just not deciding to date American women. Well, as you see in the next video follow up, this cannot hold true for everyone because just because a person's race or especially in the situ when, in the consideration of what we see on the left hand side uh, doesn't exclude them from being a part of the or participating in American and postmodern American consumers cultural beliefs so until next time fellows